Hello, my name is Jason Johnson. Thank you for watching my videos. This video is on the Raptor flowchart based program, and we're going to be looking at chapter five challenges for the Prelude to Programming textbook. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. For my students, you can email me. We're going to look at six challenges in this video, and I'm just going to make one big long video for each, each one of these instead of doing six different videos. So you can just go find whichever challenge you're needing help with. The first challenge, we need to find the sum of the squares of the integers from 1 to my square, where my square is input by the user. So we want to make sure that we check the user enters a positive integer. So first what we're going to do is we're going to output to the user what this program is going to do. We're going to accept the number from the user and output the sum of the squares of the number from 1 up to the user's number. We're going to set the variable of my square to 0. We're going to set our count at 1. We're going to set our variable of sum to 0. And then we're going to ask our user to enter a positive number. And then we're going to set my square to that number. Then we're going to check to make sure that the my square is a positive number. This is our check right here. We're going to say, is my square less than or equal to 0? If it is, it's going to kick out of the loop and say, cannot enter a negative number because we told the user to put a positive number in. If they put a 0 or a, uh, or if they put a negative number in, not a zero, because less than or equal to zero. Um, so a zero or uh, anything in a negative range will kick out and end the program. If it is a positive number, it's going to come over here and it's going to start a loop. And we're going to start a count and we're going to ask, is the count greater than my square? So if the count, if they put in one and they have a my square in here, the count is still greater than my square. And it's going to say yes, and it'll say the sum of the squares from 1 to my square is a sum. If it's not, if the count is not greater, it's going to say take set the variable of sum to the sum plus the count to the um, variable of 2, count to the power of 2. And then we're going to say count and add, add 1 to the counter. Now, one of the things that you can do in the Raptor-based program here that I'm not sure I've showed my students yet, you can set a uh, toggle a breakpoint. So if I want the program to stop every time it gets to this, this decision tree here, which in this case I don't, let's come on down here to the loop. If I want it to stop every time on the loop or if I want it to stop right here, I can right mouse click on that and say toggle a breakpoint and you'll see a little stop sign there, a little octagon. And when the program loops through every time it gets to this, it will stop even though we're on the play button. It's, it's like doing the step to next shape except it's doing everything until it gets to the stop sign. The cool part about this is we can turn that off while we're running the program. So let's run this. And we're going to start and we're going to output to the user what the program's doing. It's going to set count to 1, my square to 0, sum of 0, and it's going to ask us for a positive number. Well, let's check it because we want to do some uh, checking on this. Let's make sure it's going to kick out if it's a 0 or a negative number. So let's do negative 15. We're not going to do a zero because we know zero will kick out, but we're going to do a negative 15 and we know it'll kick out and it'll say cannot enter a negative number. So let's run it one more time and let's put in 10. So we're going to put in 10 for a positive number. It's going to say, yes, that's greater than zero. It's not less than or equal to zero. So it's going to get to the loop. But now my toggle breakpoint stopped us. See, it got right here and it stopped. It didn't continue to run. Now, all I need to do to keep running that is just press the little play button. And it's going to check, and the count was not greater than my square. So it went down through, and it said count now is 2, my square is 10, and the sum is 1. And what it's going to continue to do is just loop through until the count gets up to 10. And the it's it's running right now, but I've got a breakpoint here. I can turn this breakpoint off, and then now the program, once I press play, will just continue to run until it gets to the point where I want it to. So count 3 sum of 14, count 4, sum of 30, count 5, count 6. We can also speed this up on the speed up bar up on the play speed, but I don't think we need to because I put a small number in here. And then it's going to get to 10, and then it's going to say count is 11, and it kicked out. And so it's going to say the program will accept a number. The sum of the squares is 1 to 10 is 385. So it took my count, and it kept counting up until 10. So when I got to 11, it kicked out. It said my square was 10. The sum was 385. That's the first challenge. 
The second challenge, we want to input a list of people's ages from the user terminated by a zero and find the average age. We want to make sure that we check the we want to make sure that we check that the user enters only a positive number. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to the program is going to tell the user that it's going to accept a series of ages input by the user and then we'll output the average age. So we're going to set our variable of age to zero, our average to zero, our sum to zero, and we're going to use a counter on this. Then we're going to ask the user to input an age or enter zero to quit. And we're going to get the age and we're going to set the age from whatever the user input. And then we're going to start into a loop. Now this decision tree here is going to say, is the age equal to zero? If it is equal to zero, we're going to kick out and come down here and it's going to say, take whatever the sum is, is it equal to zero? If the sum was equal to zero, which means they put a zero in the first time, it's going to say you have not entered any data. If not, the age is going to come here and it's going to say, now set the sum to whatever the sum plus whatever the age that the user input and then add to the count. And then we're going to enter an age or enter zero to quit. So we're going to do something similar to what this was right here, but we're going to put it down here inside this loop. And then it's going to take that information. It's going to come back up to the loop again. It's going to check again and say, was the age zero? So we did we put in a zero into quit. If we did, it kicks out and does the same thing again. If not, it's going to continue to loop and it's going to continue to count and it's going to continue to put numbers in and it's going to add to the sum and it's going to add to the count and it's going to add the age to the sum. And then once we finish, it's going to come down here and it's going to say, if the sum is more than zero, see it's more than zero, it's going to go to the no side and it's going to say the average, take the sum divided by the count. So we've counted how many numbers we've put in and then we're going to divide that by the sum and that's going to give us an average and that's going to output that to the user. So let's put a series of those in here. It's going to tell the user what we're doing, setting our age, our average, our count to one and our sum to zero. And let's put the first age of five in. So it's going to come down to the loop. It checked. It was not equal to zero. So it stored that. Now, if you notice here, my age is five, my count is two, and my sum is five. So if I put another, let's say I put 10 in this time, it's going to take 10 and add that to the sum of five, but it's going to make my count three now. So it's going to come around. My age is now 10. So it added 10 to the 10 to the 5, which made it 15. Count is 3 now. So let's put in 25. My count is 4. My sum is 40. Let's put in another 25. And that gives us, and then now let's put in a 0 to quit. And that's going to give us, so our age zeroed out. Our average age was 16.25. So we've got uh, average age of 16.25 because it took the sum of 65 divided by 5, which gave us the 16.25. So that was the program challenge 2 for chapter 5. Programming challenge number 3 for chapter 5, we need to take the number n factorial denoted by n exclamation, and it's defined to be the product of the first n positive integer. So n exclamation equals 1 times 2 times whatever times n. An example would be 5 exclamation equals 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 equals 120. Or 7 is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 equals 5,040. So that'd be an example. So we're going to say find n, where n is a positive integer input by the user, and initialize a product to 1 and use a loop to multiply that product by successive integers, and be sure to check that the user enters a positive number. Make sure, that it, make sure, the, make sure to check that the user enters a positive integer. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to tell the user this program will find the factorial of a number entered by the user. We're going to set our variable of number to zero, our product to one, and then we're going to ask the user to enter a positive number. And then we're going to set our count to whatever that number is. So this is going to set our count to the number. And we're going to check to make sure, did they put in a positive number? They can't put in a zero, and they, can't, they have to put in one or greater. So it has to put, be a positive number. And this is how we're going to check for that. We're going to say, is the number greater than zero? If it's not, we're going to kick out and say, the factorial cannot be calculated on that number. If it is, we're going to come in here and we're going to do a loop. And we're going to say, is the count equal to one? If the count's equal to one, we're going to kick out and say, the factorial of the number is whatever that product is. If not, it's going to continue and it's going to say, no, what's the product? Product times the count. 
So set the product to be the product times the count and set the count to count minus one. So we're going to start counting down because remember up here on the count, we set the count to the number and it's going to take the count and start subtracting from it every time it rolls through. So it knows when it's going to count down. So let's do a toggle a break point right here so we can stop it when it gets to this point and we can discuss what's happening and let's run this and let's do like the example, let's do a seven and let's put a positive number of seven in and it's going to count and the number was greater than zero. It didn't kick out and it got to our loop here. Let's finish it. Let's continue on and the count now becomes six because the count was seven. Went to It went to six because we subtracted one and we said our number was seven and our product was seven. If we do it again, it's going to say seven of 42 counts five and it's going to continue on. Now it's going to set it to 210 and I'm going to go ahead and remove the toggle break point and just let this continue to run. It's going to continue to run now until there's count two, count one. It now is equal to one and it'll kick out and then it's going to say the factorial of seven is 5,040. Exactly what we were saying in our example here. One times two times three times four times five times six times seven equals 5,040. Programming challenge number four allows the, allow the user to enter a series of temperatures and degrees of Celsius terminated by the input of negative 999. For each one, find the corresponding temperature in degrees of Fahrenheit. The conversion formula is Fahrenheit equals 9 times Celsius divided by 5 plus 32. So we're going to tell the user what the program is going to do. We're going to set a variable of Celsius to 0. We're going to set our Fahrenheit to 1. And then we're going to enter a temperature in degrees. In, enter a temperature in degrees of Celsius or enter negative 999 to quit. So if it sees not negative 999, it's going to quit. Is Celsius equal to that? So if it is, just go ahead and quit out. If not, we're going to uh, convert the temperature and we're going to say Fahrenheit, and this was our formula that we gave, 9 times Celsius divided by 5 plus 32. And then we're going to put to the user the Celsius degrees Celsius is what the Fahrenheit degrees is. So it's going to do the conversion and then tell the user what that is. And then we're going to ask them to do another one. Enter a temperature in degrees until they put in negative 999. So let's run this. We're going to tell the user what it's doing. It's setting our Celsius, it's setting our Fahrenheit, and we're going to go ahead and let's say uh, degree uh, Celsius, let's do 32 of Celsius. And it's going to say, is it more than negative 9? It's not 999, so, or negative. So it, it gave us what our 32 degrees Celsius is 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's do another one. Let's say it's 76 degrees Celsius. And it's going to tell us now that our Fahrenheit is 168.8 based on that calculation, let's put in a negative number, negative 10. Hey, and it gave us our, because we do have a negative number, negative 10 degrees Celsius is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's go ahead and put in negative 999. It will see that that is equal to that and it'll kick out and it'll end. So this is a loop until this is a do while the condition does not exist for negative 999. So this was programming challenge number four. Programming challenge number five is a biologist determines that the approximate number of bacteria present in a culture after a certain number of days. Time is given in the following formula. Number equals bacteria present times two to the power of time divided by 10 where the bacteria present is the number present at the beginning of the observation period and let the user input bacteria present, the number of bacteria present at the beginning. Then we want to compute the number of bacteria in the culture after each day for the first 10 days and do this in a loop so that the user can see the results in a table and the output table should have headings for day and number of bacteria present on that day. So this one seems complicated, but it's really not once you have the math. We're going to set our variables and we're going to use our subchart and we're going to kick over here and we're going to come to our subchart for variables and we're going to set number, bacteria present, time, and day. Number and bacteria present, we're going to set to zero. Time, we're going to set to one. And day, we're going to set to one. Then the, this subchart's going to end. It's going to come back to the main program. We're going to tell the user what it's doing. We're going to ask the user to enter a number of bacteria present beginning of the, at the beginning of the observation period. It's going to start a loop and it's going to say, is the time greater than 10? If it is, then we're going to kick out. If not, it's going to say, set now number 
to be whatever bacteria present is times two to the power of time divided by 10. And then we're gonna output to the user the day, day of the bacteria present plus the number. And then we're gonna set the day to day plus one. And then we're gonna set our time to time plus one. And we'll continue to do that until we do the loop. So we're gonna put our bacteria in and then we're going to uh, do our 10 days. So let's start this. It's gonna do our variables. It's gonna to go to the subchart variables, set number, bacteria present, time, day, come back over here, tell our user what it's doing, ask us to enter a number of bacteria present at the beginning of the observation period. And let's say that we had 50, 50 bacteria present. We're gonna click okay. It's gonna go into the loop. It's gonna do the, is the time greater than 10? No. So it's just gonna to continue to loop around here and let's toggle a breakpoint so it'll stop the next time it comes around. So it's, to, it's I us toggle my breakpoint. So now we're down to day five. And it's going to roll through again. Day six. I'm going to click start enter. It's going to go around day seven. Do enter again. And anytime it's running, running Raptor, by the way, you can press the equal sign to pause the program that's running. I'm going to go ahead and remove the toggle breakpoint. Click play. Let it finish out. It'll do number day nine, number day 10. And our total bacteria present at 50 at the end of 10 days is going to be 100 based on bacteria present times two to the power of times divided by 10. So that was programming challenge number five. Programming challenge number six, we're gonna help a user calculate their car's miles per gallon. We wanna write a program to allow a user to enter the number of miles driven and the number of gallons of gas used. The output should be miles per gallon. So we're gonna use a do while post test loop to allow users to enter as many sets of data as they desire. Now in this one, we're going to get a little bit more complicated because we're going to have multiple charts and we're going to set our variables first. And on our variables, we're going to set miles, gallons, MPG for miles per gallon, and then our response of lowercase y. Then it's going to come back to the program here and it's going to say, this program will calculate your car's miles per gallon, what we're doing. And then it's going to start a loop. And on our loop here, we're going to ask the user to enter their miles driven on this, tr on this trip. And we're going to set that to whatever the miles is. See, because we've set miles over here to zero. And now here we're going to say set the miles. And now we're going to verify miles. Now verify miles is going to come over here to the subchart of verify miles. And it's going to do this loop here. This is our verification process. It's going to say loop until is the number miles, is it a number? So if it's not a number, it's going to kick out and say invalid entry, enter a positive number. So they've got to enter a positive number in. So it's going to continue to loop. This is a this is a validation check here. And for the students in my class, we're doing an ATM machine for their final project of the course. And this is a way that you can check to make sure that the that the user inputs a valid number. That to make sure is it a number? And so it's going to continue until they put a valid number in. Once it does do that, it's going to come down here and it's going to say, "Are the miles is miles?" less than zero. If it is, they've put in a, they need to enter a positive number and it's going to end the program and loop back out. If it is, if it's not less than zero, then it will come back over to the main chart because we've verified miles. Now it's going to say, enter the number of gallons used. And we're going to do the same thing for verifying gallons. We're going to verify our gallons on another sub chart, which looks almost identical to verify miles, except we're using gallons now instead of miles. And we're going to say, is it a number? And it's going to look like right there is number is gallons a number. If it is, then come on down here and say, is the, is the gallons less than or equal to zero? This is a little bit different change from the verify the miles because we need to have more than zero miles here. We can have zero gallons because they can just say, Hey, we didn't need any, need any gas. If it was less than, or they need to have at least, uh, you know, some gallons in there is what I'm saying here. We need to have some gallons. So it was it less than or equal to zero, then yes. And then it's going to kick out and say, it's got to be a positive number. And it's going to, and if not, um, they will, um, and then it'll end the program or it'll end and come back over here and then it'll, so they need to have a positive number. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our variable of miles, whatever that was, and our gallons and divide those. And that'll give us our MPG or miles per gallon. And then we're going to output to the user, put your vehicle's gas mileage. And now we're going to do a verification spot, a uh, point. We're going to say, are you done? So we want to ask the user a question to say, yes, I'm done. If yes, I'm done, we're going to end the program. And we're going to give two different responses here. If no, if Y press yes, if no, or if no, put in no. But we're here on Raptor, we can put in a capital Y or a 
lowercase y. So in case the user goes ahead and has our caps lock on and puts in a capital Y, we can put in multiple responses here. So we can say response equals yes. Uh, we put in two um, pipes there, which is that key is right above the enter key on your keyboard and then response. So we, we've got two different responses that would be valid. If they are, then we're going to yes and in the program. If it's anything else, It'll say no, and it's going to come all the way back up here and continue this loop again. It'll do the verify miles, it'll do the verify gallons, and it'll go through the whole thing again. So let's run this program, and we're going to come in, and it's going to tell us what we're doing. I'm going to pause it just for a second because I want to make this a little bit larger. And now it set our gallons, it set our miles, it set our MPG, and it set our response to yes. And we're going to enter our miles driven on this trip. So let's say we went... 600, oh, let's do 350 miles, 350 miles. We went 350 miles. And it's going to verify that. Is the, is the number miles? Yes. Enter our gallons of gas used. Let's put in 10 gallons. It's going to go over to our verify gallons. Is it a number? Yes. And it verified it. And now it come over and it says, are we done? But it, it, it put out, it output to me, it says your vehicle's gas mileage is 35 miles to the gallon. If I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and put a capital Y in, and it will end the program. If not, it would have looped back through and asked me to go through again on the process. So again, this is uh, the main program. We're setting our variables here. Verifying miles, we're verifying, is it a number? And if it is, we're allowing them to correct that mistake and put in a positive number. If not, it moves on. The same thing with verify gallons, and then it gives us our miles per gallon. So this was Raptor Challenge 6 for Chapter 5. Hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below. If you're one of my students, you can email me. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe and be excellent to each other.